Donkey Kong. We all know him. But how many Kongs in the Donkey Kong family could you name right now? Three, five, maybe even eight? Well, there's a lot of fucking Kongs. And don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll know every single one of them. This is every single Kong. First, to begin talking about these Kongs, let me introduce all these games these monkeys are from. To start, there's the original arcade game named just Donkey Kong that came out in 1981. Then in 1982, there was Donkey Kong Jr. But where most of these Kongs are from is Donkey Kong Country, a revolutionary game for the Super Nintendo that came out in 1994. This game has two sequels on the Super Nintendo, Donkey Kong Country 2 and Donkey Kong Country 3 and all of the country games have ports of the Game Boy line of handhelds. Not including the spin-off games that we're going to talk about later, there are three more important titles. Donkey Kong 64, Donkey Kong Country Returns, and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Now that we got all of that out of the way, let's start reviewing each individual Kong and what they're all about. First up is the very first Kong, Donkey Kong. Believe it or not, this isn't the same Donkey Kong that you might be thinking of. This Kong is only referred to as Donkey Kong in the arcade games. After losing to Mario more times than you would like to mention, Donkey Kong would soon grow old and find himself moving to Donkey Kong Island. He would later appear in games being referred to as Cranky Kong, which we now know as the modern day Donkey Kong's grandfather. So let's move on to the country games, when he starts being called Cranky. Still living on Donkey Kong Island after retirement, Cranky just likes to relax in his rocking chair, thinking of his good memories in the spotlight. But he also likes to shit on his grandson and beat Diddy with a cane. He is also the only character that consistently breaks the fourth wall. This fourth wall breaking bit even becomes a plot point of the Game Boy Donkey Kong Land. The story going like this. Donkey Kong and Diddy are telling Cranky all about their recent adventure, which at the time was Donkey Kong Country. Cranky says that they aren't shit, saying their adventure was piss easy and only sold well because of the fancy graphics and modern music, but then makes a bet with the two saying if they can beat the Kremlings on an 8-bit system like the Game Boy, he would admit they are adequate gaming heroes. Besides all that though, Cranky has a minimal role in games after the arcade. He owned Cranky's cabin in Donkey Kong Country 1 where he gives advice. Then in Donkey Kong Country 2 he owns the Monkey Museum, which is essentially just an enhanced Cranky's cabin. Donkey Kong Country Free, he becomes an opponent in some carnival minigame bullshit. Then for some reason in Donkey Kong 64, he starts like fucking brewing potions in Cranky's lab and selling them to other Kongs. But finally, he becomes like a boring old shopkeeper in returns, which is just kind of depressing. I mean, Cranky is like really fucking awesome. But it all went up for him recently, when in Tropical Freeze, he's a full-on playable character. They did it. They gave Cranky the role he deserved all this time. Now, you may have been wondering, if Cranky was Donkey Kong's grandfather, then who is Donkey Kong's father? Well, his father is Donkey Kong Jr. from the arcade, the second Kong we're talking about. There honestly isn't too much to say about him. He got his own title in the arcade where he played the role of saving his dad from Mario, after Mario put his dad in the cage. After that, he got like his own fucking cereal and then appeared on TV. And he like grew up and appeared in Super Mario Kart as well as Mario Tennis. But then he kind of like vanishes, never to really be seen again. There is a character in Mario Kart Double Dash that sits in the crowd of Waluigi Stadium that kind of looks like him, but that's it. I will mention though, there is a Donkey Kong Jr. sprite that can be found as a playable character in Mario Kart Tour. With that being said, it is a different entity than the current day Donkey Kong Jr. that I've spoken about, considering other sprite characters in Tour are shown as alternate versions of who they're based off of. But let me tell you about my favorite part of Donkey Kong Jr. lore. In a Nintendo Power magazine, there's artwork of this unnamed Kong. Fans have dubbed his name as Fedora Kong. He's a scrap character that was going to be in Donkey Kong Land, and he was heavily implied to be a character in the world Big Ape City. Big Ape City is full of references to the original Donkey Kong arcade game, so fans have theorized that the elusive Fedora Kong is actually an older version of Donkey Kong Jr. This is obviously unconfirmed, but it's a fun thought. And these are like the only two pictures of Fedora Kong to exist, and they look so fucking fire. Enough about Fury Crafting the Donkey Kong cast though. Let's move on to Junior's mother, Wrinkly Kong. 
not to be confused with Winky the Frog. She's actually one of my personal favorite Kongs. She's the wife of Cranky Kong and also works for Kong College in Donkey Kong Country 2, where she allows you to save your game, and gives you information on different items and objects that can be found in the game. In the Game Boy Advance port of Donkey Kong Country 2, she can give you a homework assignment that's called Wrinkly's Task. For every page of the scrapbook you complete, she will give you a DK coin. Donkey Kong Country 3 though is where it starts getting interesting. She retires at Kong College and now manages the save cave, which is like, you know, whatever. But in the Game Boy Advance port of the game, she doesn't run anything. She takes care of banana birds, which are like the most terrifying thing I've ever seen, and yes, this, this is a real thing. But she takes care of the banana birds and seems to have become a follower of them, trying to become more enlightened before her old age gets to her. Which fits, because by the next game you see her, she fucking dies! Like actually, her ghost gives you tips in Donkey Kong 64 through the wrinkly doors that you see her in. And this, her ghost becomes playable in Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. You can't make this shit up. The next Kong on our list is Wrinkly Kong's grandson, Donkey Kong. Not gonna talk about him much, don't worry. Because, you know, it's fucking Donkey Kong. But let's look at the Donkey Kong Country 1 intro real quick because it's fucking great knowing the info we have now. So take a look at this. Don't worry, commentator Carlito here. Uh, so we can see Cranky playing his old arcade theme on the girders from the original arcade game, just reliving his moments, you know, just enjoying his past, really. And then fucking Donkey Kong shows up and fucking steps on his head and shit and starts fucking dancing like a crazy motherfucker. Cranky's pissed down there. And then Cranky throws a fucking bomb at him, which is insane, and he fucking dies. Last intro, I know. But before we move on, I will mention it amuses me that since his father and grandfather both have the name Donkey Kong, this Donkey Kong we're talking about right now, his full government name is Donkey Kong the Third, which is fucking hilarious. Imagine you're playing like Mario Party and your friend says, "Oh, I landed on the Donkey Kong space." No, you didn't, fucker. That's the Donkey Kong the Third space. Besides that, one thing I want to point out is Mario and Donkey Kong don't actually have much beef in the new games because Mario had beef with Cranky, not Donkey Kong. They had a little rivalry in Mario vs Donkey Kong, but that's kind of it, really. But okay, next Kong. I lied, I'm a liar. It's Donkey Kong again. But this time it's baby Donkey Kong. Don't be confused, this isn't Donkey Kong the third son. It's just Donkey Kong the third as a baby. Like literally baby Donkey Kong. He appeared in Yoshi's Island DS and Mario Super Sluggers. And in this game, Donkey Kong and baby Donkey Kong can coexist in the same world. Which is something. Okay, now Diddy Kong. He's Diddy Kong, I'll be quick on this one as well. He first appeared in Donkey Kong Country. He is Donkey Kong's nephew, and his father is unknown. His character designer describes him as a chimpney, a monkey and a chimp combined. And he actually replaces Donkey Kong as the main character in Donkey Kong Country 2 because Donkey Kong gets captured. And this is actually an example of Kong character development. In Donkey Kong Country 1, the Kremlings, which are the main enemies in the game, steal the banana horde, and Diddy tried to stop them but couldn't. So it's Diddy's fault Donkey Kong Country 1 even exists. But in 2, the Kremlin steal Donkey Kong and threaten Diddy, saying they will never return Donkey Kong unless Diddy gives them the banana horde. Diddy says fuck you to this and takes Dixie with him to free Donkey Kong himself, and he succeeds. Insane character development. He also has like a boombox and fucking raps when he beats a level in Donkey Kong Country 2. It's fucking sick, look at this shit. Now this next Kong is someone you don't want to miss. Uncle Kong. He doesn't appear in any of the games. Only the Japanese strategy guide for Donkey Kong Country 2 where it gives the player hints on how to beat the game. That's literally it. Trust me, I want to know more about this Kong as much as you do, but that's all there is to him. You could say the UK on his tie could be a reference to the United Kingdom, but that's just more theory crafting. Now here's Candy Kong. She's Donkey Kong's childhood sweetheart and girlfriend. According to the German manual of Donkey Kong 64, to keep her figure, she does a lot of fitness regimes and dancing. She also loves music, and the Kongs see her as very attractive. 
but not only do the Kongs see her as attractive, but the Kremlings do as well. Candy uses this to her advantage to flirt with them and get anything she wants. One of Candy's dreams is to become a supermodel, which she eventually did become. In Donkey Kong Country 1, she owns a save point booth, allowing you to save at any time. In the Game Boy Color port of Donkey Kong Country, she ran Candy's Challenges, where Donkey and Diddy had to do challenges to earn banana coins. And there was another version of Candy's Challenges in Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. In the Game Boy Advance version of Donkey Kong Country, she ran Candy's Dance Studio, where you could play dancing minigames. And finally, in Donkey Kong 64, you can buy instruments from her at Candy's Music Store. Now, let's get into some of the craziest Kongs in the franchise. This is Dixie Kong's side of the family. That means we're starting off with Dixie Kong. She is definitely one of the more recognizable Kongs on this list, being Diddy's girlfriend and having a huge role in Donkey Kong Country 2, where she teams up with Diddy to save Donkey Kong. She can glide with her ponytail, which is a pretty unique ability, but where Dixie Kong has the biggest role is Donkey Kong Country 3. After defeating the Kremlings twice, Donkey and Diddy have the idea to go take a vacation to the, and I shit you not, Northern Kremisphere. Dixie notices that it's been a while, and they still haven't come back from their vacation, so she goes to go look for them herself. Before going though, Funky Kong tells her to babysit Kitty Kong. So he tags along and becomes the secondary character in Donkey Kong Country 3. She eventually finds and saves Donkey and Diddy in Donkey Kong Country 3, but since then hasn't had a super major role besides being playable in Tropical Freeze. She does appear in spin-offs pretty consistently though. Oh, and she also has a cool ass victory animation like Diddy Kong, so here's that. Now, we're done with all the super well-known Kongs, so this is where it's going to get interesting. The next Kong we're looking at is Tiny Kong. She honestly might be my favorite Kong because her lore is so absurd and entertaining. But uh, yeah, Tiny Kong is Dixie's younger sister. She first appeared in Donkey Kong 64 where she wields a feather crossbow and can shrink in size. She also has a role model being Candy Kong. Tiny wants to grow up to become a supermodel just like Candy did. But let's stop talking about the boring shit, let's get to the real fucking Tiny Kong lore. Before dreaming about becoming a supermodel, she was known to be a genius on Donkey Kong Island, handling the numbers and managing the banana coin savings. She was a legitimate tax officer, handling Donkey Kong Island's financial ecosystem. And yes, this is all fucking real, this comes from the official German Donkey Kong 64 website. It's all fucking real, it's crazy. But we're not even done with Tiny Kong lore. She's the only one I'd say who truly messes with the timeline of the Donkey Kong universe. So, after Donkey Kong 64, she didn't appear in any games for 8 years. Which is a long ass time, and you'd think she would fade into obscurity. But she was brought back for some Donkey Kong spin-offs, where she is shown to have visibly aged. This would make sense considering the time gone, but literally no other character has aged at all. Dixie Kong, who is Tiny's older sister, looks exactly the same as she did in Donkey Kong Country 2. Which was when Tiny looked like fucking this. Tiny Kong became older than her older sister. And yes, you can argue that she just grew taller than Dixie, which is definitely plausible. And it's probably the thing that happened. But I think she just looks way older than Dixie, like, to the point where I think there's something going on we don't fucking know. Some crazy ass Kong timeline manipulation or some bullshit. But anyway, that's enough of me rambling about Tiny Kong. That is all there is to say about her. And yes, it's extremely fucking absurd. The next Kong, however, isn't absurd, but definitely an interesting Kong nonetheless. That's right, Chunky Kong. He's Dixie and Tiny's cousin. He has the power to grow really big, and he wields a pineapple launcher. He isn't a very bright Kong, he even talks to himself in the third person. But he's a friendly Kong. He really likes butterflies, wrestling, ballet, and playing the triangle. He was said to actually be the strongest Kong in Donkey Kong 64, which would make him stronger than Donkey Kong. This is probably an outdated statement though, because in recent games we've seen Donkey Kong literally punch the moon out of orbit. But we're getting a little off topic, let's go back to Chunky. He is kind of the gentle giant type of character, 
In Donkey Kong 64, when you hover over him to select him as a character, he actually points at the other Kongs, telling you to pick them instead of him because he's scared. He even directly says for you to pick Tiny Kong. Tiny. It's kind of odd though. If you hover over another Kong, you can see him in the background telling you to pick him instead. But besides all of that, Chunky Kong really never appeared again. He didn't even make it into the spin-offs with Tiny Kong. But he did have a cameo in the Game Boy Advance port of Donkey Kong Country 3, where you can see him fucking drowning. But that's really it. He's been gone since. But I do want to add one more thing about Chunky. On the Donkey Kong fandom Wikipedia page, it says, quote, On March 19th, 2018, Chunky Kong was found dead inside his home. I do want to clarify that this isn't true. This is based off of a Chunky Kong is dead meme from 2018. But if you want to believe it's true, it's fucking fine because we haven't seen him since 1999 anyway, so he might as well be fucking dead. Ignoring that though, let's move on to Chunky's younger brother, Kitty Kong. Since he's Chunky's younger brother, that also makes Dixie and Tiny his cousins. I mentioned Kitty Kong earlier when talking about Dixie, since he has a massive role in Donkey Kong Country 3. Like I said earlier, he was with Dixie in that game because Funky told Dixie to babysit him. Kitty Kong is actually the youngest Kong in the whole Kong family. He is literally a toddler, fucking crying really loudly and screaming when he loses a life in Donkey Kong Country period. He also likes to play pranks on Dixie, but to be fair, she also pranks him back, so you know, whatever. But he is actually really strong for a baby, having very notable strength. He's also able to roll like a barrel, if you even want to really count that as like a power. But whatever, ignoring that. My personal favorite thing about Kitty Kong is that in Japan, his name is Dinky Kong which personally I think is very amusing. Just like Chunky Kong, Kitty Kong vanished after his big starring role in Donkey Kong Country 3, and we haven't seen him since. But he was mentioned in the rhythm spin-off game Donkey Konga 2. Dixie Kong writes a letter to Donkey Kong, telling him how when Kitty first touched the bongos, he learned them instantly, and immediately understood the idea of rhythm and flow. There's nothing else really to say about Kitty, so let's move on. We've officially covered every Kong in the Dixie Kong family, we're now going to move on to Lanky Kong, who first appeared in Donkey Kong 64. He's a part of the DK crew and best friends with everyone in the group. He actually wasn't born on Donkey Kong Island. He comes from the distant Yutan Island, where relatives of the Kongs live. But he's not actually related to the DK crew. He's said to be a non-biological and distant cousin of our main Kongs. He moved to Donkey Kong Island because he thought his actual family was too boring for him so he's attracted to the DK crew because of how chaotic they all are. He's also a stand-up comedian, and it's said that Kitty and Chunky specifically love his performances. Lanky also has the power to inflate himself like a balloon and fly. And as you may have noticed, he has freakishly long arms, and according to the German Donkey Kong 64 website, this is because when he was a child he made a bet with a friend, that being, who could hang on a limb the longest? So he just hung on his limbs for so long that his arms turned into that. And people have compared Lanky Kong to these fucking horrifying Kongs, the Mankey Kongs, which are an enemy type in Donkey Kong Country. These Mankey Kongs are described as Kong reject orangutans, implying they were exiled from the Kong family for their savagery. And since Lanky is also based off of an orangutan, it's possible that they are actually related. Unlike Chunky and Kitty, Lanky actually got to be in another game after Donkey Kong 64, the main one being Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. He also had a cameo where he was drowning with Chunky in the Game Boy Advance board of Donkey Kong Country 3, but we haven't seen Lanky since. Now the fan favorite, Funky Kong. He's a fan favorite for good reason. He's a cool ass fucking Kong. Just look at him, he's, he's a fucking surfer Kong with shades. In the games, he runs multiple shops, he usually isn't a playable character, because Funky has stated that he doesn't actually like adventuring, but he will aid his friends in their adventures with his services. Some examples of his services, in Donkey Kong Country 1 he runs Funky's Flights, where you can fly in a plain barrel hybrid for free. The Funky Flight service allows you to travel around the island to different areas. In Donkey Kong Country 2 he runs Funky Flights 2, which is essentially the same as Funky Flights 1 but now you have to pay an initial two banana coin fee. In the Game Boy Advance version of the game, Funky owns a gyrocopter, 
and instead of paying money to use it, Funky just makes you play a minigame, and after that you can fly for free. In Donkey Kong Country 3, he owns Funky's Rentals, where he plays the role of a mechanic. Now instead of giving you rides across the island, he makes vehicles for you if you bring him items. Some of the vehicles are on screen here. Each new vehicle you get also means you get access to new locations you couldn't get to before. The Game Boy Advance version of Donkey Kong Country 3 is practically the same thing, but each new vehicle you get you have to play a minigame. Funky also plays a pretty crucial role in the story of the game. If you give him every DK coin that's obtainable in the game, he will give you the gyrocopter I mentioned before, and with this new copter, Dixie and Kitty Kong can locate the Banana Bird Queen. In Donkey Kong 64, he runs Funky's Armory, where you can buy the Kong different fruit guns, like the previously mentioned Pineapple Launcher. Funky Kong doesn't actually appear in Donkey Kong Country Returns, but Cranky Kong makes a joke in reference to his absence, saying he does not know anybody with an airplane, and using one would be pretty convenient. In the Nintendo we use Tropical Freeze, Funky just runs some boring item shop. But this changed when the Nintendo Switch port of Tropical Freeze released, coming with a new Funky mode, where you get to play as Funky Kong. So Funky probably changed his mind about not wanting to adventure. In this mode, Funky can't run the shop obviously since he's out adventuring, so he's replaced by a parrot named Tox, who wears shades like Funky Kong, and he's pretty damn cool. Just look at him. Funky also gets it better than most Kongs in the spin-off treatment, even appearing in Mario Kart Wii. And let me clarify that Funky Kong isn't actually related to Donkey or Dixie's families, he's just a really close family friend. Another Kong who isn't related to anyone is Swanky Kong. Swanky is a dapper ass entrepreneur Kong who appeared in Donkey Kong Country 2 looking like this, and in Donkey Kong Country 3 looking like this. He's so fucking baller! His role in the series is just hosting game shows and other types of money making competitions. He's a true showman. He also enjoys showing off his wealth with his expensive suits. He first appears in Donkey Kong Country 2 where he hosts Swanky's Bonus Bonanza, a quiz show where he asks you questions about general knowledge from Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Country. He also has multiple quizzes you can choose to play, and they range in difficulty and pricing to enter. You can earn things such as extra lives for getting all the questions right in his quiz show. In the Game Boy Advance version of Donkey Kong Country 2, there are a few minor changes, but the main change is how the stage actually looks, resembling more of an actual game show you'd see on TV. Candy Kong also appears by Swanky, kind of acting like his assistant in this version, but she actually doesn't do much. His next show he hosts is in Donkey Kong Country 3, where he owns Swanky's Sideshow, a circus themed attraction. It's a mini game where Dixie and Kitty have to throw balls at targets. It requires two bear coins, a currency that's exclusive to the Northern Hemisphere, to play around, and if you win, you receive four bear coins. In the Game Boy Advance port, Swanky's Sideshow gets replaced entirely by a whole new minigame, that being Swanky's Dash, a virtual reality game where you have to run through a pipeline filled with small stars and spike balls. The goal is to collect as many stars as possible. Kitty Kong is actually not allowed to play the game because he's too young, so you can only use Dixie Kong in this minigame. The reward for completing the game are some bear coins. Swanky Kong hasn't really been seen since Donkey Kong Country 3, but he still seems to be running his business because in Mario Superstar Baseball, there's an advertisement for one of his games on a wooden billboard, but that's the only mention we've seen of him since. I've now listed every Kong personality that has appeared in the mainline titles, but we're not done yet. We're about to get deep in the jungle and talk about some very obscure Kongs. Before we move on though, I do want to show where all the Kongs we mentioned are derived from. They all come from the Kong species, which you probably could have guessed. These are just ordinary monkeys in the Mario universe, but there are multiple subspecies of Kong. Like I mentioned before, there are the Mankey Kongs, but there are also Minkies, which are just another enemy type, but this time they appear in Donkey Kong Country 3. The Kongs we're familiar with are most likely just different looking versions of the main Kong species. It's also likely that Kongs age quicker than humans, since characters like Mario seem relatively unaged even though Cranky has a fully grown grandson now. But let's move on and get obscure. Let's talk about the Donkey Kong Country animated cartoon. This cartoon is very strange and you'll see what I mean. So without further ado, here's the section on the cartoon exclusive Kongs, presented by my friend Bezzy. You know, I find it really funny how in the process of making my video, Carlito somehow got me to do his for him. Anyways y'all, it's your boy, Bezzy. 
I was a part of the second chamber, but now I have been reduced to random voiceovers for essays. Without further ado, let's talk about the GOAT of all cartoons. First up, we got Baby Kong. This goofy bastard is an exclusive to that one gift from God known as the DKC cartoon. He only appeared in two episodes, those being Ape Fu Young and Baby Kong Blues. In Ape Fu Young, he's just our main monkey DK the third, but he accidentally drinks the leftover remains of a youth serum Papa Cranks made. This makes him become a baby. Later on, little homie pops up again, but alongside our normal grown ass adult DK the third, the youth serum DK the third gets retconned in Baby Kong Blues when in that episode, he was just a completely separate character. Our next Kong is Grouchy Kong. I'm gonna be honest, as an avid fan of this cartoon, I've never even heard of this Kong, but that totally makes sense. Apparently she's Cranky's great grand aunt, and she also wrote his spell book, and I'm gonna be honest, that's all I really got. One of everybody's favorite Kongs from the cartoon, Bluster Kong. Bluster Kong is an entitled and arrogant bastard. He's madly in love with Candy Kong and tries to spit game to her and steal her from our boy DK the third. He runs Congo Bongo Island's residential barrel factory, but we find out it's actually owned by his mother who we never see, so we can properly assume that he is indeed a mama's boy. We have seen him speak on the phone with his mother though, and Bluster is shown to also be the rich, spoiled character archetype, kinda like Bling Bling Boy from Johnny Tess, but not nearly as cool. He actually has a lot of different episodes focused around him, so I'll just give one example. In one episode, he is trying to impress Candy as usual by drinking a serum, but that in turn transforms him into Leo Luster, making him super cool and super attractive at the same time. GET OFF THE TRACK! Not a doin'. You're gonna stop because that's what you do when you're faced with an irresistible force. Irresistible is what I am, baby. Even slightly winning over Candy in the process, he was able to trick K. Rule into giving up the crystal coconut. The effects did run out though, but later in the episode he transforms into Leo Luster again without the help of a serum. This was possible because according to our boy DK the third, somewhere inside he is Leo Luster. The serum just brought it out. Now, while not really a Kong, we still gotta mention him, Eddie the Mean Old Yeti. This goat appeared in multiple episodes throughout the cartoon. The plot of the first episode we see Eddie in is pretty simple. Bling Bling Boy Knockoff Bluster is trying to impress Candy as always and steals the crystal coconut. But Bluster loses the coconut in a nearby barrel which is then deported off to the White Mountains when Eddie finds it. DK the third and Diddy negotiate and trade the crystal coconut for a matchstick. He then has like one other main episode before becoming a character that is used very little throughout the rest of the series. And I'm gonna be completely honest, he looks kinda similar to the Caucasian DK skin from Smash, but to be honest, it's probably not based on Eddie, as I'm also pretty sure Nintendo does not want to be tied to this glory hole of a cartoon. But I will say that most of our problems in the world would come to an end if Nintendo just came out and said it was him, Eddie the Mean Old Yeti. And last, but certainly not least, we got Kung Fu. This man only appeared in one episode, but might I add, this is the best episode in the cartoon. He was hired by K. Rool to fight DK in a set of challenges. Kung Fu wins two out of the three challenges, but then loses the heart challenge. Because when Kong Fu was scared and distracted by a solar eclipse, DK refused to hit him with that three piece combo no drink needed. Kong Fu then forfeits due to his immense respect for DK and then he rides off into the sunset never to be seen again. Thank you Bez Monster. Bezzy is currently making a Koopa Family Tree video which is going to be pretty fucking dope so give it a watch when you can. It's not going to be done by the time this comes out, but if you're watching this in the future, the link should already be in the description. But now we're done talking about the Donkey Kong Country cartoon. But, while on the topic of animation, let's talk about the upcoming Mario movie real quick. Honestly, when making this video, I was not planning on talking about this movie, because there was no reason to. But in the middle of fucking editing this, they released a second trailer to the movie showing literally like fucking 50 Kongs. And I was fucking pissed. Obviously, I can't cover these Kongs because, well... The movie isn't fucking out yet, 
but I'll quickly go over my theories and concerns on how this will affect the Kong universe. So first things first, there's a new Donkey Kong design. I don't have much to say about it. New Donkey Kong. But honestly, I'm confused if this is Donkey Kong the Third or Cranky. Obviously, you'd think it would be Donkey Kong the Third, but in the trailer, he's shown to be fighting Mario like Cranky did, as well as being on the arcade girders, which could just be a reference to Cranky. But again, who knows? There's also this old man Kong who seems to have like a major role, which he could be Cranky. He kind of looks like him. And then there's like fucking 50 Kongs. From the ones I can like make out in the background, they look like entirely new Kongs, which fucking blows because I can't cover them. But if they do get enough screen time in the movie, you have my word that I will make an every Mario movie Kong. But this is very off topic. Let's get to some Kongs we actually know. Now, this one is gonna blow your mind. You know, the Rabbids? They're like the video game equivalent to Minions. Rabbid Kong. This comes from Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle and the Donkey Kong Adventure DLC. He kind of just acts like a normal gorilla rather than acting like Donkey Kong. And he fights Mario in the base game. But in the DLC, he fights Donkey Kong, where he appears as, you guessed it, Mega Rabbid Kong. It's the same fucking thing, just beefier Rabbit Kong. He fights Donkey Kong twice, but then after the fights, he becomes friends with him. Because apparently, the bad bananas were corrupting him. And when the bad bananas turned back into normal bananas, Rabbit Donkey Kong became friendly. There's also a Rabbit Cranky, which is interesting. He pretty much acts exactly like Cranky Kong. But the most interesting thing about him, in my opinion, is that in the Mario plus Rabbids game, if there's a Rabbids version of a character, that normal character is also in the game. But there is no Cranky Kong, and he's the only one in the game where that's the case. So what I'm saying is he might be dead. We're now in the final fucking stretch. You've listened to me talk about fictional monkeys for 32 minutes now. And now, we're finally approaching the finish line. These next few Kongs all appear from the same game, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. It's literally a game about Donkey Kong punching the fuck out of big bosses. It's kind of dope. Regardless, the story of the game goes like this. There's a bunch of different fruit kingdoms and each one of them has a leader. And there's a big bad Kong who beat the fuck out of all the leaders so they bent the knee to him. Okay, now here's the fruit kingdom Kong leaders. There's Dread Kong, ruler of the Banana Kingdom. Karate Kong, ruler of Pineapple Kingdom. Ninja Kong, the ruler of the Durian Kingdom and Sumo Kong, ruler of the Starfruit Kingdom. There's really not much to say about them individually. The coolest part about them is their designs. But the Kong they bent the knee to is kind of interesting. This fucking maniac of a Kong's name is Ghastly King, also referred to as Cactus King. In Japan, his name is Final Kong. And not only does he look terrifying, but he's canonically one of the most powerful villains in the entire series. In the Wii port of the game, Ghastly shrieks, quote, the world is mine, all mine, and threatens not only to take over the world, but the entire observable universe. And now, the climax. This is what all of this has been leading up to. For these next Kongs, I'm going to rapid fire over them, explaining them, but going over them quickly because they really aren't that important at all besides the fact that they exist. Some of these are even arguable to be considered Kongs, but they pretty much all derive from Kongs, which is what this whole video is about, so let's get a move on. This is the Kinda Kong section. Gorillas, an enemy type in Super Mario RPG, they're just Kongs in chains. Yukiki, a monkey from the Mario series that appears in Mario 64 and a lot of Mario Party games. Bink, called Binky in Japan, an undead skeleton Kong that runs a minigame on a cruise ship in Superstar Saga. Ancient Kongs. Ancient Kong civilization that was first depicted with murals and returns. They seem to have worshipped bananas. Cranky Kong's great-grandfather. He is mentioned but never seen in Donkey Kong Country 3. He seems to have owned an antique mirror. Baboons the Boisterous. Three Baboon Kongs in Tropical Frieza can clone themselves with ninjutsu. Super Donkey Kong. A white DK that shows you how to beat a level if you suck dick and keep dying on a level in returns. Super Diddy Kong. Same fucking thing. Mini Donkey Kong. Okay, Helper Kongs, monkeys found in Jungle Beat, they fucking exist, great. I literally don't think I can say his name, but I know you're curious. 
He was in very early builds of Diddy Kong Pilot before being scrapped for obvious reasons. According to an anonymous Rare employee, he has been officially killed off and won't be making any more appearances. Monkey Kong. I literally have no fucking idea. Apparently the name Monkey Kong was mentioned somewhere and I can't find the source. If you try to google it, good luck finding anything that's not Donkey Kong. This picture is apparently some black unnamed Kong that was scrapped. Don't know the source of this either. Donkey Kong Jr. 2 a Player 2 version of Donkey Kong Jr. from the arcade version, and some people believe that he is Donkey Kong Jr.'s brother. Now let's talk about how fucking STUPID that is! There is no fucking way a Player 2 recolor of Donkey Kong Jr. is a relative in the Kong family. That is so fucking absurd. Do you know how many questions that would like fucking add to everything? Jesus fuck man. Do you know how long I was researching Kongs to then stumble across fucking Donkey Kong Jr. 2? Reading about this genuinely made me fucking pissed. I fucking graduated from Kong College. I should not have to deal with reading this bullshit. <sighs> Holy shit. Let me calm down for a second. Look, it's okay. He could be a possible brother to Donkey Kong Jr. Do I believe so? Fuck no, alright? He's a recolor of Jr. That's fucking it. Why when I google Donkey Kong family tree is he consistently shown as the brother? There is no fucking proof that he's related to the Donkey Kong family in any way. <sighs> Actually, the more I think about it, it's okay. It doesn't matter. After spending hours of my life finding out about all of these Kongs, I've grown a bond with them. It doesn't matter if you think he's family or not. I now truly believe that no matter who you are, whether it be Diddy Kong, Lanky Kong, or even yes, Donkey Kong Jr. 2, if you're a Kong, you're family. Thank you for watching.